episode of the CLS Experience, we have a very lucrative treat. She's a world-renowned thought leader in financial empowerment for women, self-made millionaire, soulful business guru, and a best-selling author, no big deal. She is a visionary, redefining wealth and success from her digital courses to her game-changing book. She's not just teaching, she's transforming lives. Her unique blend of ministry, mental health counseling, and spiritual practices make her an unmatched force in the coaching world. Big facts. While putting herself through graduate school, she taught herself how to build her first website. A decade later, her company is an eight-figure global powerhouse, serving clients and students in 85 countries, just to name a few. Her mission has always been to get the power of money into the hands of good-hearted women who are here to change the world and achieve their wildest dreams in business, life, and love. She's just a juggernaut in all facets of life and a terrific mother and human. Please welcome the money queen, the charismatic, highly knowledgeable, trailblazing, and abundant Amanda Francis. How you doing, Amanda? I am good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing That good. was quite an intro. I really enjoyed, enjoyed that. <laughs> to be honest with you, if you want, I'll come with you wherever you want. I'll be your hype man. As long as you liked it, I'm good to go. <laughs> Amazing. You would be a great hype man. That was really, really good. Cool. I, I put a lot of effort into it. I'm glad it elevated you. We were having a lot of fun before we hit record. Um, for our audience, in case you weren't familiar, we're about six million out. My best suggestion: do a deep dive, play catch up. What I think is most valuable today is we just have an unbelievable conversation. Before we dive in, I want to ask you: how are you feeling right now? I feel so pregnant. <laughs> I feel so. Um. So if anyone's seeing this on video, not just the audio, I have a huge belly. Thirty-six weeks pregnant. I have about nineteen more days to go. We hope. I have an intention for a day I want the baby to come, which would be in about in about 19 days. Is there a specific date for that? 2424. Two, I'm going for 2424. Four, I mean, if anybody can manifest it, it's you. Thank you. The due date's actually February 14th, but that is way too long to stay pregnant. Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. Which is a nice due date. It's a very Thank nice you. due date. I just don't want to be pregnant that much longer. I understand. That's actually my anniversary with my fiance, Valentine's Day. So that is a nice oh, day. Oh, that's nice. But that is a long time away. Uh, Yeah, it's like a month. <laughs> I love it. And, and one of the many things that you talk about now, which I think is so beautiful, and we'll just dive right in, is redefining your priorities in business and motherhood. And I know a lot of people out there, like, you know, they're a mom, which is obviously the most important job, but that takes away from a lot of their own stuff, like their career and so forth. You don't subscribe to that. You do it all. How? I do do it all. Um, Number one would be the belief that I can keep doing it all. Like I didn't go into it expecting to crumble, expecting to lose myself. I went into it, I think, with a strong sense of self, a strong sense of purpose, and a strong vision for the kind of mom I wanted to be. Now, well, that doesn't mean I feel like I'm getting it right every day. There are days where I'm like, I had time with my kids. I had time with my family. I worked on things that were meaningful. And today I got it right. And there are days where I feel like no one got the best of me. Work didn't get all of me and the kids didn't get all of me. I was too divided. But I have more of the former days than the latter. And it's many things. I mean, in the practical sense, it's what kind of help do you want? What kind of child care can you get behind and feel good about? Like, I want to be with my kids. I don't want round the clock child care. So, okay, when does someone come in and be an extension of me for how many hours for me to do what kind of work? It's making decisions like that and tweaking, tweaking, tweaking as you get them a little better and better. Um, but I want to stress, I don't think anything is possible if we don't believe it's possible. So that would be my biggest emphasis for myself and all of us. Because we we can do it all. We can. But you might be stretched a bit, you know? Heck yeah. And one thing that I, lo I love a lot of stuff about what you talk about and so forth, and our audience is for such a treat today, but you're super intentional about your life. Right. Yeah. Like, like nothing is really by accident. And that's not to say that you're like you said, tweaking and pivoting and so forth. But you typically like to have a vision for the way that your life's going to play out. Is that right? A hundred percent. And I think one thing motherhood has made me realize, I think I always knew this, but I know it more now is I've been forming this vision my whole life. Like when I saw moms in airports with all their kids 
dressed well, feeling good, looking good, somehow being gentle with these crazy wild humans and going somewhere they wanted to go. I was like, that's the mom I want to be. I want to be the successful mom in the airport living. You know, I'm so pregnant right now. And I was out to dinner like two nights ago, super pregnant with two of my kids, pushing the stroller, but we were eating where I wanted to eat. And I was eating what I wanted to eat. And my kids were behaving beautifully. And I was like, this is what I always wanted. So I think there was a vision that I formed always. It was always in my mind. And then <laughs> you have to keep creating it when it's like, but how the fuck do I do that? If my one-year-old's throwing the sugar packets on the floor, <laughs> like right. you, you have to like hold the vision and execute and tweak it and work it in the actual moments of it, because real life is always a little different than the thing we had in our mind, you know? Yeah, of course. But but as a wise person once said, what if feeling good is the whole point, right? What if feeling good is the whole point? And, and I have told you, like, you. many moments of being a mom, doing these things with the kids <laughs> do feel good. And then carrying a 25-pound baby up the stairs nine months pregnant doesn't feel good. But having the new baby in my arms with the bigger baby next to me, I think that might feel pretty fucking good, you know? First of all, I was looking at one of your I don't know, pieces of content and I saw you were obviously pregnant and doing your thing. And I know a lot of people, depending, I guess, different people have different experiences of being pregnant, but you basically said, I'm, I'm focused on the end result, holding the miracle in my hand. And so- Yeah, I said that a couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's oh, all, yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, you get the miracle, you get the tiny baby in your hand and that's what you were doing it all for. Yeah. Yeah. And in the meantime, I mean, pregnant people might know, we don't have to go on and on about pregnancy, but pregnant people might know there's like indigestion and insomnia and restless legs and pelvic girdle, girdle pain and round ligament pain. Don't Google any of this if you're not pregnant. Like there's <laughs> some stuff on the way, but entrepreneurship was a lot like that. I love my whole entrepreneur journey, but when you're setting up your autoresponder in the middle of the night or whatever, and you're learning how email marketing works and like, your sales page won't save. And like, I mean, it's kind of like similar. We go through it in little ways, believing that it's going to be worth it. Yeah. And we, we figure things out along the way, right? 100%. Yeah. And we were having a little laugh before we hit record about like setting up a, you know, a camera angle or a tripod. And you reminded me of the beginning a couple of years ago when I reinvented myself and so forth. I didn't even have a, a laptop or a website for the first six, eight months, but you got to give yourself permission to be less than perfect and get stuff going. A hundred percent. I when I, so my we don't know where my uh, tripod is. My son was <laughs> lifting it over his head the other day because we call it feats of strength. He likes to show us how strong he is at one year old. <laughs> I couldn't find my uh, tripod and I was trying to set up the camera leaned up against shelves, which we have going on now. And I just had this memory of being in Bali and stacking up books. And putting the laptop on top of the thing, on top of the other thing, on top of the whatever. And I did that for many live streams and many courses for a really long time. I don't know. But again, always made it work. Yeah. And one also, another thing about you, it's so authentic. And I saw you writing, like, sometimes you, you'll host something or record something from your bed. It is what it is. As opposed to somebody pretending that there's something like renting out a studio and so forth. And that's just, that's real. It's how I prefer to be. And I've gotten a lot of hell about it online. Like, oh, with all the money you ha have, we would think that you would get more pro professional production or whatever. And I'm just like, I think there's something really authentic about for 13 years, wherever I actually am in the world, like whether it's been a hotel or something I've rented or something I bought, like this is my house I own that I'm renovating right now. But wherever I actually am, I sit on the bed with the tripod and my phone and I speak from my heart and it's resonated with tens of thousands of people. And someone, when someone's like, but the lighting wasn't very good on that video. I'm like, is that the thing though? Or is like the insights and the wisdom and the energy of this content, was the lighting going to be the thing that changed your life and propelled your business? Like, <laughs> I don't think I'm called to show up for, with the best lighting. Like, I don't think that's like the vision of my heart i think i'm called to show up and be real and tell you something that matters you know 100 percent. that's why we love you for it there's so many Thanks. places we could take this conversation i, I want to make the most of the time uh, obviously money and so forth but one thing that you talk about a lot and i think it's a good time just because it's the beginning of the year 
is you talk about manifesting your next level of life. And so many people, especially in our audience so forth, they, they hear manifesting and it sounds good, but I, I don't think they actually understand how to manifest. How can, mm -hmm. what can we give someone that's tangible to learn how to manifest their next level of life? So I would want them to know that they're manifesting all of the time already. And they actually already know how. And if they were to think about their life, they'd be able to think of something where they had a standard, had an expectation, had a desire, and they either intuitively knew or they decided that that thing was for them, that it was going to happen this way or happen that way, or that they just felt it, that either luck was on their side or something was going to go well this way. Like, wait, is that the guy? Is that the school for me? Is that the job? Is that the something? They thought it was possible. They felt pretty good about it. It worked out. And they're like, oh, lucky me, it worked out. Well, so the thing is, their energy, their thoughts, their emotion, their decision all went into the creation of that. And not just that day or that week, but for like a long period of time. So <laughs> manifesting is like an adding up of things. So that you have an empty cup and in your empty cup, you put a little moment of it's possible. I can do it. Wouldn't it be cool if I desire this? I think I could make this happen. I think this could work out. You do a lot of that and the cup adds up and it overflows into your reality. And we're doing that with quote unquote positive and quote unquote negative things all the time. But the point is that we have a big say and how life goes. And you can explore this and get more and more familiar and intentional with the emotions, the thoughts, the energies, the actions that help us potently and intentionally create. But we are all creating all of the time. That was like the most was beautiful. That was the most unbelievable visual I ever got. It sounds so simple, the way like overflowing it's over, but everything's created twice, right? First in our mind and, and then we in real life. And we're co-creating everything, good or bad. But the way that you, I just, I love that. Like different affirmations or declarations or whatever you got to do. And, and then eventually yeah. it overflows. It's only, it's inevitable that that pours into your physical life. Right. So you, when you start to understand it and the times you've done it and you're like, I want to do this more and I want to do this better and I want to do this intentionally. Yeah. Like you said, it could be affirmations. It could be the way you're journaling. It could be the way you're doing your workout, your yoga, your movement. You could do a lot of different things with an energy and with an intention of where you're going and have it be part of your manifestation and co-creation. But I think like at, at the very like simplest, if we're just going to teach people how to manifest, like how are you talking to yourself? How are you feeling about yourself? How are you feeling about life and the world? And what are you discounting yourself from and like Xing yourself out of and deciding it's not right and not possible for you? Just all the love long day. I think that very simple thing is probably the most powerful. I have like a, a dopamine hit speaking to you right now. This is awesome. And Thanks. same frequency. <laughs> no, nah, straight up. There's a lot of alignment here. I know that most people either quit or, or don't even start because of the limiting beliefs that they've created. I'm not worthy or I'm too old or I don't have experience. Yeah. How, do, how do you've done such a good job of that? And I know you also teach on it. What is the strategy that you use to maybe remove or replace those limiting beliefs or something a little bit more empowering? My favorite question for myself and for everyone else is, is, is that ultimately true? Because we have a lot of thoughts and a lot of ideas and maybe they've been true for someone. Maybe we saw it, be the reality and the case for someone else, but that doesn't mean it has to be the norm or the standard or the rule. And I also believe we can be the exception to the rule. So I question all my thoughts continually. Well, first, you know, you're the observer of the thought because many of us don't even notice what we're saying to ourselves. Like that's how it all starts. Like when you're like unaware and not conscious about things, you don't even know how you block yourself and limit yourself and how you believe a bunch of things that are completely made up. And then you start observing and you're like, oh, I'm telling myself this and I'm creating this. Isn't that interesting? Maybe this is a product of my thoughts, my emotions, my energies, my beliefs, you know? And then I like to ask myself, like I said, is that the ultimate truth? And it never is. You can always think of someone, someone or something or some idea, some possibility that someone did it 
differently, that someone had a different result. And why can't you too? And I have to tell you, if I didn't believe I could be the exception to the rule, I would be in Sand Springs, Oklahoma. That is where I'm from. Nothing wrong with it, just not where I wanted to fucking be. And instead I'm in Bel Air in Los Angeles in this house I own that used to belong to a real housewife. Like that's not normal. It's not normal to go from Sand Springs, Oklahoma to Bel Air and live in a real housewife house. But I didn't expect normal for myself. And why should you, right? Why should any of us? Yeah, playing small is canceled. And, and it's our responsibility to utilize our gifts and, and play big and make an impact and all that stuff. 100%. So our responsibility to just go for it and live the kind of life we want. That's right. No one can do it for us, you know? 100%. You talk often about the energy of expansion. And I'm just curious for you personally, like, what does that feel like for you when you're in that energy? I know we want to be in that energy all the time, but we're human. What does that energy feel like for you? What does expansion feel like? It feels like, you know, everything we've just said, but kind of over and over again at different levels. It feels like taking something you know you want that doesn't seem possible, feeling into yourself and like meeting your, pre like your present self, meeting your future self, where your future self is at. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. So you have a vision, you have an idea, you have a place you want to go. You don't know how you're going to get there, but it's like taking where taking yourself where you are right now and like feeling into who you would be and what you would have to know and what you would have to understand and what you'd have to believe to already be that person, you know? Yeah. And maybe find out what's interfering with it. Yeah. And why won't you let yourself be that person? What's telling you you can't? Um, I also think expansion, the way I teach it, I don't know <clears throat> all good <clears throat> and also thank you for for hopping on you're about to give birth like any minute i know it's fine, <laughs> it's fine. um expansion the way i teach it i call it incremental increase sometimes and what i mean by that is sand springs oklahoma me couldn't imagine a seven million dollar year or a one million dollar year or a five hundred thousand dollar year or hell a fifty thousand dollar year so i had to hit goals that were a stretch that felt impossible but that I could begin to get behind one goal at a time and as I met the goal or almost met the goal I started feeling into the next goal and the next goal and the next goal so I always had a few places I intended to go like in my mind that I was starting to put my energy around as I went and then, so like I said, I was catching up to those visions as I went and meeting my future self where she was at as I went. But a lot of people get themselves all freaked out with like, I really want this, but it's something they can't even begin to wrap their mind or energy behind. So I like to go, you know, one thing at a time. That's good. I, I think of like stretch goals. I think a lot of people, like if it's too big, they can't fathom it. And so it doesn't really excite them. But you would you would purposely right. stretch yourself and, and then work towards that and then kind of open even more expansion. Okay, we just nailed this. What else can we? But what else? But what else? But what else do I want? What else would be cool? Yeah, just and you don't have to know the how. It's really hard to manifest the future, future, future goal or whatever, even the next future goal, if you're really worried about but how, but how, but how, but how, but how. To me, it's more about holding the vision. If I'm holding the vision, I'm believing it's possible. The steps tend to show up, but they don't show up way, way ahead, you know, but you're not responsible for the next 10 right steps. You're responsible for the next one right step. So for me, it's always taking the inspired action for the next one right thing I really want. And as I take that action, doing that action with the energy of this is getting me where I am going makes that action more powerful. Yeah. Like I don't I don't take any steps with the like, I hope this works. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. This is so powerful. I'm curious like when you started studying a lot of this stuff and educating yourself and, and buying in, who are some what are some works or maybe some old people that you gravitated towards to really open yourself up to all this stuff, which is the juicy stuff, all the stuff beyond the logic. Right. Okay. So we have to go back really far. <clears throat> <laughs> Let's do so, it. So I have to go back really far. So I have a Christian background and the kind of Christianity I found myself in living in the Bible Belt as like a teenager 
was a lot of the things we're talking about, but with different words. It was like claiming the promises of God, believing that God, or now I might say like the divine or whatever, was like on board. And I could put Bible verses all day long to support this, you know, if that's what we wanted to do. But <laughs> it was like on board with us having a good life, making money, uh, achieving what we desired, using our gifts in the world in a positive way, all everything I just said with more Christian-y language. So I kind of had that as like a foundation. Like I believed God was on my side and creating a beautiful life. So that would be like the first <laughs> inspiration I would say. And then I went through my life. And when I came across a lot of different things, new age teaching, obviously, but I was studying yoga, Buddhism, Hinduism, a lot of things. So I had this foundation and I found it really interesting when all these other principles or practices or belief systems or religions or whatever, when aspects of those like validated what I already knew. So that was very supportive to me. Like, wait, so they're saying this and I've always heard it like that, but it just means that, right? So I never had to like abandon any belief. It felt like my beliefs evolved as I studied and I grew and I learned, right? So then when I started learning more about like what we called the new age movement, I found Gabby Bernstein, her book fell off the shelf at Barnes and Noble when I was at the very beginning of starting my business. And I was like, I think I need to read this. But again, it validated things I felt inside. And it was the first woman I saw, I think running a company, making money, living her life with spiritual practices, you know? Yep. And I always had that vision and idea for myself, but now I saw it and I saw it outside of like just Christian church world, but in a different world, which meant a lot to me at the time. Anyway, so then I kept going. And I think at that point, I started really just studying how people were doing like the online thing. Like what was, you know, this was a long time ago now we're like, we're like 2011 right now. Like what, what, like, how are you branding yourselves online? How are they using social media and how are they building an email list? And like, what were they saying on like enrollment pages for courses or for code? Like, what is all this? So I just watched people. I watched Marie Forleo. I watched Danielle Laporte. Wait, once. I watched Gabby. I'm like watching people. I'm like, what is the business side of what they do? So that happened for a long time. And that was like a really good start for me. And then, you know, I'm learning the branding and the marketing and of course, evolving spiritually all the while. And then the first coach I ever hired, the first mentor, her name is Katrina Ruth. She's still online. I don't know if you know her. I hired Kat and it was like, say I was making, and I had this, like my business had grown. Like, I think I was making say $50,000 a month and Kat was making like $300,000 a month. And I was like, who is this crazy woman saying fuck and God in the same sentence on the internet being kind of <laughs> reminding me of me being unabashed, but she's done it longer and she's doing it well. And she seems to know some stuff. I don't know. So I hired Kat and she was my mentor for a few years. And that was an important time in my life. And I would say really since then, I've just been taking everything I know and just running with it and multiplying it over and over again i haven't hired a mentor in a very very long time yeah it's so cool the whole story uh first of all it's god was the foundation yeah and all that stuff and, and god still is the foundation oh, but yeah it had to like evolve because wow. like me saying everything i say like on the pulpit at a church wouldn't be nearly as impactful as how i'm doing it you know 100 percent. yeah yeah and then the new age stuff. And I love Danielle Marie also and all of them. And then and looking at the business side of it. Okay. So how do we kind of blend these? Right. And right. So it's interesting that these coaches who are teaching mostly spiritual things. I mean, Marie was teaching business things, but like Gabby and Danielle weren't teaching business things, but I was watching their business. And looking back, that was really smart. Like I was receiving their emails as a consumer, but also as someone who was curious about how business and personal development would would work you know what i mean absolutely yeah yeah and then blend them and also i used to have this misconception and i was wrong like hardest worker in the room this and that 
And I was on Wall Street before I reinvented myself. And even when I just started this, and then I really started just surrendering and buying into all this stuff. And in fact, now I'm taking a class at the Kabbalah Center. I don't know if that's anything, something that you've ever dabbled with, um, but it's all the spiritual I part. Have it. Yeah, it's cool. It's all similar, different things, but uh, within the systems and understanding universal laws and so forth. And just being able to. I think most things, when you go in it, really, I think when you, this is how it, like, if these are the words I would use of how it sounds in my mind. I think when you know God for yourself, whatever that means to you, you can go into a lot of state spaces and know whether something feels like God, feels like love, feels like light to you, or whether it doesn't feel right to you. And you don't have to take anything that doesn't feel right. But like, I asked someone from the Bible Belt, I had to decide it was safe to explore and find God in many a place. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it just reminds me of what you said earlier, like, don't worry about the how. Yeah. Old division. But the didn't, but didn't Steve Jobs say the dots won't connect looking forward, they connect really looking backwards. back? Yes. Kind of have to trust the dots will connect looking back. But if you're holding your vision, moving forward, and taking your inspired actions, your inspired guidance, like you get somewhere, you know, you do. Yeah. And also, when you're able to connect, like, I feel like if you want to go higher, you have to go deeper. And you're able to draw upon that divine inspiration, those one ideas, right? The, these gifts aren't ours. Essentially, we're, we're a channel or a vessel. Yeah. 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 And we all are like gifted at channeling or, or whatever in different ways. Yeah. And you figure out how, like, I feel like I can teach. Like I can sit here and riff on stuff and give the manifestation example and whatever. And that's like a gift, but it didn't, none of it really like came from me. You know, it's something, it comes through me as I let it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit of money stuff, shall we? Sure. You're the money queen and so forth. And I love talking about this. It's so interesting to me. Everything is energy. This mug, your tripod, it's well, the jury's still out where that thing is, money and so <laughs> forth. And one thing I learned recently, and it's been really helpful, is that if we know that money is energy, then the way we feel about money, money can sense that energy. And for example, if you just store money in your bank account or just collect it and so forth, money doesn't want to just sit there. It wants to flow and move around and so forth. And so you have to be so conscious of, of how the energy of money might even think about how we behave and so forth. It's made a big difference for me personally. What are some of the frequencies and, and so forth and, and understanding kind of the energy around money that's really helped you? Yeah. Okay. So like your example of like the savings account. So this is what I've known. I've noticed about money and it applies to every aspect of money, but you can have money in a savings account and it can feel good to stack it up. Like I'm stacking the money. I'm growing the money. I love that it's sitting here for me for when I want it and need it. And that can feel good. Or it can feel like hoarding. It can feel restrictive. It can feel like I'm not allowed to spend it. Something bad's going to happen if I spend it. I'm going to spend it and I'm never going to get it back. And one of those has a vibe of abundance. And one of those has a vibe of lack and restriction and not enough. And those two different vibes will create different results. And we could be talking about the same amount of money for the same person in the same account. You know, and that's like really the nuance of the energy of money is from what place are you taking these actions and what is being created? So so I imagine someone's listening right now like, whoa, can you run that back? So so what actions are we taking with those beliefs? And then what are we creating from that? Yes. Okay. So there's a line in my book. How did I say it? Because I said it's so good. <laughs> I said, no one told us that the energy by which we do a thing creates the outcome more than we've been able to realize. That's not, I said it better in the book because I got to sit there and pick up the sentence till it was perfect. And we'll encourage but no one to told us it. that the energy by which we do the thing creates the outcome. So the energy by which you hold that savings account creates the outcome of the savings account. Meaning if you're like, if the savings account really feels good, feels like stacking the paper, like you're proud of yourself, you feel like you're honoring your money, you love that it's sitting there, you may find at the end of each month, there is more and more to put there because you love that fucking savings account vibe. 
And when you take money out of it, it's to do something you love that's meaningful to you and you're so excited about it. I love to stack the paper and then I love to take a big chunk out and do something really great with it, like a big investment, a big donation, a down payment on a house. Like that is amazing, but I have to love the fucking account. If I'm scared to spend, if I think spending is going to hurt me, if I think it's all going to run out, if I'm in the vibe of hoarding it, I'm not going to be inspired to do any of those great things with it. And I'm probably going to find that I don't have as much at the end of the month to put there because there's no love in that spot. There's no abundance in that spot. Why would more money want to go to a place where it's not loved? Does that make sense? It makes all the sense. Yeah. So the energy by which I put the money in the savings account, the energy by which I think of the savings account is recreating the result of the savings account. But we like to go like, oh, I just didn't have enough money this month. But there's so much more to it than that. Like money is just not dollars and cents. It's not just numbers. Yeah. First of all, it's beautiful. And when and when you were giving the example, oh, someone's saying I don't have enough money at the end of the month. That's not the cause. That's actually the effect. Right. You created that and why. Yeah. And it's so good because let's just say somebody's at a job that they can't stand right now. And as a result, like they're, you know, they're going in, like they hate to be there. Their body language is off. They're thinking about something else. That's probably not going to lead to something great either. But let's just say you went in there, treated like it was a Super Bowl, did the best that you could. Somehow, some way, that energy would, would create an opportunity for you to step into something that you actually wanted to do. A hundred percent. Yeah, I've seen countless, countless examples where either an opportunity to step out of the job arose or the environment of the, the workplace itself shifted all from someone showing up differently and deciding that they were going to do meaningful, purposeful things with their lives, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll land the plane with this final nugget. This is so much fun. I could talk to you all day. Um, hey. one, yeah. One of the many things that you do is you have awesome courses and so forth. And you talk a lot about unapologetically like selling and so forth and one of the things that you talk about, which I thought was really beautiful, is selling from your soul. And mm -hmm. I thought you could tell us exactly what that means. Yeah. Okay. Selling from your soul. So when I was on my entrepreneurial journey, I started creating my courses and I very much enjoyed sharing about them because I enjoyed telling people I created this. And this is what you're going to learn. And we're going to go through it together. And I'm just giving you the opportunity to enroll if you want to. I felt like I was always selling from like this very clean, authentic, non-pressury, non-manipulative place. And I very much enjoyed how I sold. But I encountered through clients and friends and colleagues, people who were so afraid to sell. That selling is sleazy. Selling is wrong. People aren't going to like you. The algorithm is going to hate you. Whatever. And so... And, and everyone was saying, well, don't be salesy, don't be salesy. And I'm like, but what if it's okay to be salesy? But what if we sell with soul? What if we sell with love? What if we sell with light? What if we sell just wanting to help people? What if we sell just giving people an opportunity? What if we sell with no pressure? What if we sell knowing the right people show up? And what if we sell not mad or irritated or having anything about it when people don't feel called to our work? Like, what if we just present it and love it and do it with our whole heart with our whole soul and just do it well I don't know so before I really really owned that I could sell with soul I was like I don't know it was a long long time ago I would like launch a course like once a quarter and like a lot of, I, don't, I was kind of bored when I decided that I could sell and sell well and sell with love and sell with soul, I like my business really exploded because I could show up every day and tell people what kind of cool shit I wanted to do with them. And that was just way better, you know? 100%. And a word that comes to mind is describing that is alignment. Like you're actually, yeah. this is something you wanted to create and you think it's the right time. And you'll find someone that's a match for that, as opposed to maybe selling what you think you're supposed to do because it's once a quarter. Yeah, no, 100%. Like, yeah, that's very, yes, that's very inter <laughs> a very interesting point. And I think about it sometimes, like if you were just to say, say like Amanda Francis, the marketer, the person who's learned how to market herself and her business. Like if I were just to make smart marketing moves of what I thought I could make the most money, I don't think I would make any of the things I'm making because I'm making the things I feel called to make that I want to make that I, that I love trusting that if it's on my heart, 
then it's an answer to someone's prayer. And that's what I should do. Like, but I understand from a very practical perspective, I could probably create, I don't know. That was something that was more like intelligent from a marketing sense about like, how to have an eight figure, blah, 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 blah. But I'd rather create something called best year ever where I help people set intentions for the new year and release the past because that's what I want to be doing in January. You know what I mean? Percent. And when you're excited about it, that's contagious. Yeah. And you can get behind it and you want to be doing like, it makes me want to die to think about doing the other kind of course I said, it's not what I want to be doing, you know? Yeah. yeah. What are you most pumped about right now? What are you most excited about right now? Getting this baby out of my uterus. <laughs> and then number one, number two, um, I have the Rich as Fuck Planner coming out, which I'm really, really jazzed about. So my book is called Rich as Fuck. More money than you know what to do with. You like you said at the beginning, it's a bestseller. I sold like 130,000 copies. It's done incredibly well for a self-published book and I'm very proud of it. Oh, and yeah. I like to add to the rich as fuck experience in meaningful ways as I go. So a few years ago, we created a journal where all the, like all the journal prompts and all the homework from the book are in one place in a journal. So people can like be reading the book or listening to the audio book, but have a physical place to work through everything in the book. And now I have the richest fuck planner coming out, which is taking concepts from the book, but applying them to like your day, week, month, and year. So you'll have like a weekly affirmation, a weekly gratitude spot, a weekly spot to like notice how you killed it, a spot to notice what you're ready to release, what you're ready to call in. Like we have all of this in your week and in your month and in your day. So it's taking these like book concepts and concepts from my body of work, but it's like in a planner because there's also a place for your to-dos and a place for what you have to do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. There's all the planner stuff but like way vibier and I'm really excited and it should be out like tomorrow. Oh, really? Really, really excited. Yeah, we just finished it. And like when you're, when you self publish, you finish your product and you upload it to Amazon and you wait for Amazon to approve it. Yes. So we're kind of like, we think it's tomorrow. Understand. Okay. I'll put all that stuff in the show notes. I absolutely love it. And then also uh, I want to ask you real quickly. You talk often about being uncomfortably honest with yourself. And, and I just, I thought that was so beautiful because I think that's how you really make a lot of change, maybe a short answer. What do you mean by that? How could somebody apply that? I know it's just a nugget I threw in the end because I thought it was so awesome. Being uncomfortably honest means a lot of things. It can mean like, I said I really, really wanted this, but I didn't act like I really wanted it. I didn't really make it a priority. Did I really want it? Did I put my heart and soul and energy and intention behind it? You know, like, to me, that's a big one. Like, oh, the manifestation just didn't work. Okay, well, let's be honest. Why didn't you want it? Why didn't you believe you could have it? Did you think something bad would happen when you would get it? What was really going on below the surface? One of my continual practices is opening my journal and saying to myself, what is going on below the surface? Because we have the kids and the business and the family and the team and the whatever, but what am I feeling? Like, what is going on with me? Like, what do I actually need to look at? Because those vibrations and frequency and thoughts and ideas that don't feel good, that are kind of hanging out below the surface, are also manifesting all the time, you know? So, like, I just think being really honest about what you really want, what you don't actually want, what you didn't actually show up for, like, I think all of that's just really powerful. And when you're honest with yourself, then you're it's scary because then you're really responsible for it. You're responsible for the change. But you, you were responsible for it all the time, you know? All along you were responsible for it, but now you have to, like, own it. Yeah, and then, but at least you supply the awareness. This is awesome. This is really special. Uh, 30 seconds, real quick. Maybe one word answer is rapid fire. Are you ready for me? Yeah. Favorite movie? Movie? Yeah. Uh, Forrest Gump is coming to mind. Good one. Your last meal on Earth would be? Um, I would have a petite filet with blue cheese crust maybe some holiday sauce some asparagus maybe <laughs> some chocolate cake mashed potatoes lobster mac and cheese <laughs> best answer of all time Favorite yeah and like i also want a blue cheese wedge salad okay continue <laughs> oh 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 and a gray goose a dirty gray goose martini let's mm -hmm. imagine i'm not pregnant at the time is that your go-to if you're not pregnant I don't really drink that much, but if you're saying last meal on earth that I'm eating a steak, we're having a martini. Oh, fair enough. Okay, good.
Favorite guilty pleasure? Hmm. Gilmore Girls. Favorite workout? Pilates. Favorite book, not including yours? There's a book called um, The Game of Life and How to Play It. It's Sounds really good. old. It's really good. Sounds awesome. Okay. And last one, very deep. Your favorite musician? Don't oh. hate me. Taylor Swift. Ooh, I did not see that coming. I Is love Taylor. But if I had to do a second, I would do like John Mayer. And they're very, very different. I like songwriters. I like a, a soulful songwriter. Fair enough. This is really special. Hang up for one sec. I want to connect to you after. I want you to know you're the definition of authenticity, intuition, and goddess energy. I could personally Thank guarantee you. your best is yet to come. Keep on spreading your wings and leaving your mark on this world. So much love and respect for you. Thank you so much for stopping by and dropping these priceless, juicy nuggets today. Thank you for having me. That was awesome. Okay. You think that you don't think you're going to have any sound issues? You think we're fine? To be honest with you, I don't think you could sound better. It's unbelievable. Amazing. Hey, I have a question. Do you mind if we repurpose it? Can we put this on my podcast too? Yes. Okay, cool.